Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. The first episode of the seventh season of The Clone Wars looks at the game of chess being played by the clones and their separatist enemies. It highlights one of the more interesting things about this conflict. On one side you have programmed machines, and on the other side you have genetically programmed clones. While the clones are definitely a bit more flexible in their use of tactics, the droids are also excellent at using analytics to learn from every move they make. As Captain Rex explains to Mace Windu, every time the clones use a plan that is successful, the next time they do it, it's far less likely to succeed. Once a Separatist droid army learns about one of the clone's tendencies, they become a lot more effective at countering it. And by the third year of the Clone Wars, the Grand Army of the Republic was facing a crisis at the tactical level. The clones had become predictable, and advanced recon commandos like Captain Rex and Echo worked hard to devise a series of special strategies to make their unit harder to predict. Echo would eventually go MIA during an attempt to extract Republic prisoners from the infamous Citadel prison, leaving Rex the only one with the knowledge of the 501st secret playbook. But then at the Battle of the Naxus, almost a year later, droid forces led by Admiral Trench put up a stiff resistance against the Republic forces, defeating them several times with perfectly planned counterattacks that exploited the weaknesses in Captain Rex's playbook. The separate strategy is so perfect that Commander Cody and Captain Rex are suspicious that what they're facing is not just the result of droid analytics, but something far more sinister. Now today I want to take a look at this idea of using analytics and algorithms on the battlefield. Is it actually a feasible thing to do? By definition, analytics is the discovery and interpretation and communication of meaningful patterns in data. It's something that we as YouTubers use all the time to determine what kind of videos you guys like watching and what you don't. Instead of just assuming that you guys like videos about clone troopers and battles using my intuition, I can look at data that states that we have increased viewer retention and increased views and also searches for a specific type of video. Today, analytics have worked themselves into almost every industry in one way or another. And this move towards analytics is facing a lot of pushback from traditionalists who like using their intuition and their gut. But of course, those things are tainted by human emotion and bias. With enough information gathered, it's very easy to confirm or invalidate one's perception of reality. A great example of the introduction of analytics into an industry is covered in the biographical sports drama Moneyball. It's based on the true story of the Oakland Athletics 2002 season. The Oakland Athletics had just lost in the American League Division Series in Game 5 for the second year in a row against the Yankees. It was well known at the time that teams like the New York Yankees would just outspend other teams and stack their roster with amazing players. For instance, the Yankees in 2001 led the MLB by spending $109 million on their payroll, whereas the Oakland A's were at the bottom of the league with a payroll of just around $33 million. There is a salary cap limit in Major League Baseball, just like other sports. Teams could just pay a luxury tax if they go for the mount, and that's basically what the Yankees did every year. With the 2002 season coming up, the Oakland A's were about to lose several of their major stars, including Jason Giambi, who of course was lured to the Yankees by a massive seven-year, $120 million deal. General Manager Billy Bean was unlike other GMs in the league. Instead of just fully relying on his scouts to find good players, he would use something known as sabermetrics. This was an empirical analysis of players based completely on baseball statistics instead of observation. Billy Bean himself had been a potential first round pick and star prospect, according to MLB scouts, and then failed to perform up to the league's expectations. Billy Bean's predecessor, GM Sandy Alderson, had been the one who had introduced the principles of sabermetrics to the Oakland A's and helped make them one of the most cost-efficient teams in the MLB. Billy Bean would continue that legacy, and in the 2002 season, the Oakland A's became the first team in the MLB to win 20 consecutive games, while having one of the lowest payrolls in baseball. This led to what was known as the Moneyball Revolution in baseball, where the use of sabermetrics became more valued by several other teams. 
Many baseball traditionalists to this day see this as a tainting of the game, but it's a proven method that has led to several highly efficient MLB teams. And also, in many ways, it's made the league far more competitive. Now, sabermetrics could only happen because of the tireless work of statisticians that carefully catalog everything that happens in each baseball game. For those of you who watched football this year, you probably noticed that Amazon Web Services has teamed up with the NFL to track basically everything on the field. We're not just talking about quarterbacks, ratings and yards per carry for a running back. AWS apparently is collecting thousands of data points from each individual play that catalogs everything from player speed, field location, and movement patterns. They're calling it next-gen stats and they're using Amazon's machine learning and artificial intelligence technology to find patterns that a human could never recognize. In comparison, this makes sabermetrics seem like almost basic arithmetic. Whoever can get their hands onto all of this data and analysis can significantly change how the game is played. With all that computing power, a coach could figure out what percentage of the time does the opposing team's middle linebacker fall for Lamar Jackson's play action fix. We could further break that down by what kind of defensive scheme that middle linebacker is playing in, what type of coverage they're in. We can also look at where Lamar Jackson's play action goes, left or right, off tackle, up the middle. Is Lamar Jackson faking from under center or shotgun? The possibilities are endless and it's also kind of terrifying because in the old days, coaches would essentially sit down for hours going through game footage to find all of these tendencies and, and patterns and now an AI can basically eliminate that entire need. Now why do I choose to look at team sports when I'm talking about battlefield analytics when we clearly have examples of AI using machine learning and predictive analysis to defeat people in board games like chess or Go or even in video games like League of Legends? Well, chess, despite being called the game of intellectuals, is a pretty simple and limited game. There is only one small board, and there are a limited amount of pieces that can only move in a certain way. A computer can easily learn all of these rules and devise a strategy to win in almost any type of situation. This is because a computer can simultaneously simulate many different possibilities after a human moves, so they can usually find the most effective counter in every situation. Go is a bit more complicated, but still a board game confined by rules. A video game like League of Legends is even more complicated with a variety of different characters, items, buffs, and spells, and maps. But again, all of these characters are predictable because they are being run on script, and once the AI learns how each character behaves, they will be able to play it to maximum efficiency. They also have a much faster reaction time compared to humans, and they have a better ability to multitask. Although it should be mentioned in the case of League of Legends, the AI that faced pro gamers played a simplified version of League of Legends that limited the amount of heroes and certain features were also turned off, showing the limitations of that specific AI so far. Now obviously team sports also have rules, but they feature humans who are some of the most unpredictable things in the world. As of now, there are just way too many factors in a sports game for a computer to fully take into account to have 100% accuracy when using predictive analytics. For instance, Jimmy Garoppolo on paper looks like an excellent quarterback. He also looks like a soap opera star and led the 49ers to a stellar 13-3 record, placing them at the top of the NFC. But the AI does not really know how he's going to perform on that third and 10 play in the fourth quarter with 38 seconds left in the Super Bowl, trailing the Chiefs by four points. Two plays earlier, Jimmy had his ball battered down by a defensive lineman, and one play earlier, he tried to hit Kendrick Bourne on a slant in tight traffic, which also resulted in an incompletion. Maybe by third down, his confidence is shook. And so when Jimmy Garoppolo has Emmanuel Sanders open on a post route, he overthinks his throw and leads him too far. So how can an AI predict that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to miss that throw? Well, it really can't with 100% accuracy. But if we look at Jimmy Garoppolo's stats throughout the season, the AI might notice that Garoppolo struggles with longer passes, especially ones in between the numbers. The AI also might notice that after two direct incompletions, Jimmy Garoppolo's third down conversion rate is abysmal, especially when the 49ers are down in the fourth quarter. As the AWS collects more information, I'm sure they're going to refine their algorithm so that they'll be better at predicting exactly what play a team will run and whether it will succeed or not. Now I choose football as the ultimate example because it's actually one of the most strategic and cerebral games in the world. Before each play, the commanders on both sides choose a strategy. Every player on the field has a responsibility and if they miss their assignment, 
the whole play can become a failure. Just like Captain Rex and Echo, each team has their own offensive, defensive, and special teams playbook. And each team will call plays depending on what kind of situation they are in, what part of the field they're on, and what kind of personnel the other team has on the field. If the offense comes onto the field with speedy wide receivers and no running backs or big blocking tight ends, the defense might take away some of their larger middle linebackers and place defensive backs which are much faster to match the offense's speed. But still football is just a game and it's played on the same size field with the same amount of players. Sure the individuals playing are all different and prone to being very unpredictable but an actual battle is even more complicated. You have thousands of more variables that turn into millions of different data points that your AI would have to collect and then analyze. Predictive analysis is a big part of the Pentagon strategy for modernizing our military force. And we found that not only is analyzing the data an extraordinary task, so is collecting data from an active battlefield. Unlike the controlled environments of a chessboard or a football field, an active battlefield is usually shrouded in mystery and misdirection. After all, one of the most crucial parts of any battle plan is hiding your troop movements from the enemy. Now, the DOD's Project Maven uses computer vision algorithms to help military and civilian analysts better process video data collected by drones and identify important locations and people and vehicles. It's one of the many steps taken by the DOD to assure that the massive amount of data and surveillance taken by the military can accurately be understood. It's kind of scary stuff and reminiscent of the movie Eagle Eye. Now, very little is known about how the separate destroyed army works. Star Wars does this purposely because it tends to focus more on story rather than techno babble, which is one of the franchise's biggest strengths and some might say its biggest weaknesses. But if the separate destroyed army has battle droids that can operate independently and follow simple strategies that are created by more complicated commander droids, there's no reason why the separate destroyed army cannot collect massive amounts of data from the clones on the battlefield and using predictive analytics determine with a certain degree of accuracy what the clones they are facing will do in any given situation. Which is why the Republic ultimately calls on a bunch of crazy renegades called Clone Force 99. They're very different from your average clone trooper units. I think it's really cool we finally see the Separate Destroyed Army take advantage of the fact that they're a bunch of machines. It's kind of what you would expect them to do in a real life situation. Well, let me know in the comment section below what you think about this video. I know it's a little different. We talked about like analytics, algorithms, football, baseball. Let me know what you think. Anyway, guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.